Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I'm your host and sometimes referee, Zach Pearson, and today I'm joined on time by Michael Dad Heel, aka Romulus. Time is punctual. People need to get on that shit. I say who? Little army slang for you guys out there. All right. Um, today, or rather. The topics that we're going to go through today are a little bit uh, different or special. They're not so much philosophical questions as it is us trying to guesstimate whether or not, you know, things may change when it comes to the gaming world. Or at least what's considered and what isn't considered gambling, depending on where you're from. Go pull up topic one. I'm here. I'm pulling up the topics. Video game story and continuity. Yes, we're going to get into the light stuff first. Video game story and continuity. Is it truly necessary in this day and age or is it just an extra piece of icing on the cake or flat out unnecessary? What are your feelings on this, Mr. Hill? Video game story continuity? Yes. Could you elaborate a bit? Do you think story modes... Or an actual story chain is needed in video games, period. Or do you think we should just abandon them all together? Why or why not? Keep them. That helps keep the replay value in general instead of... (coughs) Sorry. Because games like Marvel, like Street Fighter and most fighting games are like shooting games aren't... I wouldn't say aren't too necessary, but games like Legend of Zelda and any other form of multiplayer game like Castle Crashers and the standard beat-em-ups in general would need those because story helps build what you are doing. When you find out what you are doing, then you have the purpose of playing the game. Once the purpose to play the game is there, you will want to tell other people this is how far I've gotten and use different things and milestones to get farther. Like when you brag about your friends, I managed to get through this boss in Bloodborne with only dying three times while you died six times. Almost to me just helps build more content. Instead of kind of like what they did with Gundam Fighters, where I thought it was going to be somewhat like the previous Gundam games, where this really long ass tied up with the PlayStation 2, my brother's man, me and my brother's found Mobile Suit Gundam. Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam. That game had a universe sentry mode where you went through each different. Um, storyline per faction of AEUG and the Axis and whatever the third one was. Can't remember that far. I haven't seen Universe Zero done in a minute. But that's what I mean, because well, for Gundam Fighters, it's just like fight like 30 waves of people that level up. It's like it's not so much fun trying to do that by yourself as per trying to do that with other people. Okay, interesting. Is uh, that all you wanted to say? Yep. Okay, well, I guess for me, I hate to say it, but I feel like it's, I won't say depending on the uh, production value, that's total bullshit. I want to say you don't need as much as you think you do. Or you don't need as much as we can get. I think that 
there should be a balance. But the problem is, is I have no way and I'm not going to say there's a correct way to figure out what that balance is. If you're a Metal Gear game outside of Metal Gear Solid 1, your cutscenes are too fucking long and insane. You can keep that level of exposition, but it needs to fucking be written or it just needs to be in a situation where real talk, there's less of it. Metal Gear Solid 4. If memory serves, the beginning and earring of every episode was like four minute opening cutscene, six minute ending cutscene, six minute opening cutscene, six minute ending cutscene. And I was like, am I watching a fucking movie? Like I actually said that to myself when I was playing the game. And this is from a guy that liked the game and the story. I said, am I watching a fucking movie? These cutscenes seem a little bit too fucking long. Especially when you keep in when you factor in that the cutscenes total almost more gameplay time once you learn what the fuck you're doing. Like your second, third playthrough, obviously it's gonna be short unless you increase your difficulty. But if you're just going through for shits and giggles or for a speed run or some stupid unlockable, yeah, there's more gameplay, there's more cutscene, there's more dialogue audio. And there's fucking gameplay. But I, I, I realize that that's really not so much a divisive, but an ambiguous answer. But it's actually kind of true. It's very ambiguous. But at the same time, you're not going to pull off shit like that on the cell phone game. It's obvious you're, you're not going to fucking do it. If we well, we'll do well, I'm not sure what you put cell phone games if you put them in the video game category or not even though they can turn video games into cell phone games it's really it's really kind of a mixed bag when it comes to that but i digress on the opposite side of that though there are times where you can pick up a game not know the story just see a really cool combat trailer when i saw devil may cry 3 i had no idea what the fuck it was about i don't think anybody really did we just saw cool shit, and when we saw the cool shit, we was like, oh, this might be fun. And we ended up getting surprised by the story. And there was, if you stop and really think about it, there was very little cutscenes in that game. There were some where you didn't even speak. But if you played that game right now, is that you doing that? Hold on. Yeah, sorry about that. But if you played that game right now, you can honestly tell me when playing Devil May Cry 3 that you still wouldn't enjoy it even if you didn't know the story. I would. In fact, I think after the first initial run through of the game, I've completed it from beginning to end on like three other difficulties or really all the other difficulties and still will go on to beat it multiple times just to see how fast I can get through it without looking at any cutscenes and I was enjoying myself. So how to put it or how to sum it up, summarize. I feel like story is not needed, but it does in fact help and enhance things. But I do acknowledge that it technically is not necessary to make a good or fun or an interesting game, but it fucking helps. If you want to get to work in the morning, you can walk to work, but does a car help you get there faster? It's the best analogy I get. All right, moving on to our second topic. Video games getting turned into movies, specifically Major motion blockbusters or whatever term they have for we're spending the most money. Necess need it or not need it? Why or why not, Hill? We do not need any more movies that turn out like fucking Silent Hill and the Resident Evil shitty movies. They cut out too much of what is in the game, in the movie, 
Granted, there is a main storyline, but people who have actually played the game and heard how the people talk, trying to see that get translated in a different way. Especially with games that are in another language, like certain Fire Emblem games you manage to pick up, or just mainly text-based games where, like, Animal Crossing, where it's just like, gibberish and stuff, or just no words at all, just text. There's just a very poor translation from the cinematic, well, from the video game to the cinematic era. Also, this with the whole, we're gonna whitewash all of our actors from Speed Racer all the way up to fucking Death Note. We're not going to try to even get the right people to look like the characters in the game. You know, you could tell me when you're done instead of me having to guess. Oh, screw you. I'm done. <laughs> Some things never change. Anyways. Okay. Uh... Well, for me, this may be uh, very controversial, but I say yes, but I say that with an asterisk of if you're going to respect the property, yes. Case in point, Resident Evil live action shit show versus the CG movies. I don't know how many of the CG movies you've seen. I've seen them all. But, bruh, bruh, you compare those to the fucking live action movies and it's almost like, it's almost like, for lack of a better term, there is no way in fuck they should share the same name. And they already decided they're going to reboot it. I'm like, are you serious? At this point, are you rebooting the live action movies or are you rebooting the, re the the director's version of the live action movies? Like, they really need to clarify that shit before people start investing money. That shit bothers me. It, it keeps me up at night. Like, how are they rebooting it? Also, that's a weird thing to say and think about. How are they rebooting a franchise? Also, Hill, uh, I don't know if you got me on speaker or something, but I can hear myself on your mic, bro. So... You might want to hit mute when you're not talking if you're on a cell phone or you got pushed to talk or some shit on. Um, but at the same time, there have been good examples, few and far between. But the CG Resident Evil movies, the Bayonetta uh, movie, which, mind you, it compresses the entire story. It still told the story. In fact, that story made more sense than the fucking video game story did. And that's saying something when a creator even admits that your shit's a little convoluted. So, yeah, I, I think they should exist. Plus, you want to increase your chance of building fans. Hill, do you know the real reason why Street Fighter is so endearing and so popular and has lasted so long? I do not. Well, let me just... Uh, Nip this out the butt now. It's not because of the game and the gameplay quality. I'm not saying it sucks, mind you. But it's not because of that. Plus, let's be honest, we all know that shit ain't been consistent. It's because they marketed and merchandised the living ball sack out of it with the money that they made. They didn't just go feed some corporate shield's wallet or shareholder's wallet. They marketed and franchised it. Street Fighter has had TV shows, cartoon shows, movies, cartoon movies, and they currently sell over $30 million in merchandising stuff as well as license their stuff out annually. Imagine that. Your game is selling in arcades of your own design. You get 25 cents or the equivalent of it per play. And on top of that, there's tournaments over your shit. You've got TV shows, comic books that tell your story and also fix story errors, which is almost every old Japanese story. 
You could literally be a fan of Street Fighter, spend hundreds of dollars on Street Fighter every year and not own a fucking game. Imagine that. People pay other people to draw your fucking characters. People make costumes of them. Street Fighter is a part of pop culture. Almost on an international level. Ain't too many places that don't know at least Ryu and Chun-Li. Dude, did you know Street Fighter keeps going in and out of fucking foreign McDonald's and Burger King type toy sets? Yeah, Street Fighter, still to this day. They get toys in McDonald's and shit in other countries. They've had card games, been in card games, and all other types of shit. It's because they knew how to fucking market. And movies are just another form of promotion for your own product. But it's one of the most difficult and highly cost, high cost versions. But if you do it right, it's going to pay off. Even if Street Fighter doesn't see that profit, what if it increases your stock? What if it increases, you know, how much you charge for a licensing fee? What if it increases people's interest in crossing over with your game franchise? It pays off, but it doesn't always pay off. If it's shitty, it makes it worse. Case in point, Sonic the motherfucking Hedgehog. This was a character that was more recognized than Mickey fucking Mouse, and they pissed it away at the speed of sound. So yeah, Hill, I know you didn't hear all that, but it's okay. The recording's gonna get it. And you can listen to it later. All right, it does. All right, moving into the next topic. The chaos of motherfucking loot boxing, or rather, gambling. Recently, people and countries have decided to consider labeling loot box as a form of gambling. And as we all know, at least in this country, A, child gambling is illegal. B, Gambling is taxed completely differently. And C, that means that a lot of these companies that were getting away scot-free with how much money they were making plus tax evasion are going to have their profits hit and not in the way that they like. Mind you, they're not going to go broke, but you know how it is. Greedy people don't like losing any money. Now, fairly recently, uh... The question of is loot box item rewards a form of gambling has been going around, around, around. Some people it's a hard yes. Some people it's a not sure. And other people it's a dependent on how the game companies handle it. But let me ask you, Hill, what do you consider a loot box being game wise? Especially since now Activision filed a fucking patent to basically loot box troll people who don't buy them as well as games incorporating loot box in single player campaigns Hill How I feel about this it is hard gambling for the sheer fact that you take your money and you see the top product you're getting you're like alright let me put in this amount for about three loot boxes and see what I get. And then you get the bare minimum of what you wanted. And then it's like, alright, you know what, I still got change. Let me try to boost my chance of putting more money so I can get more loot boxes so I can get more loot and probably have a higher chance of getting the thing you want. Only to come back and have duplicates, which they turn into gold, but then just becomes an endless cycle of spending money to get 
to get what you didn't want and then having duplicates of the stuff you already have because the people who made the thing have hardly updated. Only person who I've known has decided to get rid of the bad luck loot box system is Blizzard because they finally got made mad complaints about people opening in boxes for like these special events that have happened in Overwatch and only gotten shit for them. However, everybody else still thinks we, you should get low rewards unless you do some specific thing or it just happen to be that YouTuber that goes online and promotes your games like, alright, we're gonna do the thing for him to at least have some slight bonus or luck drawing this stuff. And it becomes an annoying system Whereas other games like League and other games where you need to use actual money to get the stuff you want, you can actually buy flat out the skins and other icons you want. While with other games, it's just a toss in the hat and hope for the best. Oh, I'm done now. Well, I feel like you got some horror stories. Damn. I came back and did Junkenstein. Mm -hmm. I got the Mercy Reaper in. <laughs> Excuse I got, me. Uh, I have. I got three of the main skins that they were throwing the Mercy, Junkrat, and Reaper skin. I just had to get open the loot box. I'm also done with that, right? About I got how you. Old I am. Okay. Well, personally, uh, I've been lucky, quote unquote, in the sense that all the loot box shit is usually a game I don't want to fucking play or I just don't already own, even though it looks fun. Or if it does look interesting, it's a loot box situation where it's cosmetic shit. It's not, you know, game altering. Star Wars Battlefront 2, fuck you, give me money, edition. Edition. So, I've been immune to it. But don't get me wrong. Uh, I see it as gambling. Because what do you do? You take your money and you have a chance of getting something you want. And if you don't get it and you can't earn it in game... Well, now, don't even remember some games you can, but if you can't earn it in game, what does it feel like? Feels a lot like gambling. Just saying. I have nothing else to compare it to. If I do a task and I get reward for an item I wanted, it's, it's, it's not gambling. But if I do a task, give you money, and there's a chance I get the item I wanted or want to be rewarded with, it sounds like a game of chance. And the game of chance is the definition, if memory serves, of fucking gambling. In fact, hey, Hill, go to dictionary.com, copy paste the definition of gambling real quick. I want to make sure. Did you hear me? Hill? I'm doing it right now. Okay. Activity or practice of paying or playing at a game of chance for money or other stakes. The act of practice of risking the loss of something important by taking a chance or uh, taking a chance or acting recklessly. If you do not back up your data, that's gambling. Yeah. 
and, and now we know and knowing is half the battle the second battle is what will the courts say because we already had a similar issue like this with licensing i'm pretty sure uh i went over it but i don't think he was there for that podcast hill but long story short uh as i've mentioned before on occasionally game companies don't want you to own a game that you physically own or digitally own they want to give you a license to play it you own the piece of plastic that the disc is on which is total bullshit and when i say bullshit i mean there are countries that tell them that's bullshit they bought it it's theirs or they're going to rent it but you're going to decide and they choose the option of buying because well no one's going to rent a game forever. And if they decide to get them, give the games back, where are they going to put them or some shit like that? Right. So depending on the country, you actually do own your fucking games. Not an assumption. You just own your shit. And uh, well, legal precedence hasn't been set yet, but it's it's coming because a lot of people are behind this. And I don't mean on the corporate side of things, but us as majority. We want to own our shit. Or we or or period like no ifs, ands or buts. If I own a disc, I own it. If I can modify my shit, I can modify my shit. If I don't give it to somebody and it's my shit and I mess with it. I shouldn't be sued. Owe you anything. You can void my warranty. That's perfectly fine. So I think that now this is going to be what comes up after that storm or rather these two issues might end up being dealt with at the same time. But. Personally, for me, I say, yeah, it's fucking gambling. It's, it's fucking gambling because there's no guarantee I get what I want. And plus, I've gambled before. I love speed and blackjack. Speed isn't really a gambling game, but eh, it can be if you wanted to. Now, that being said... Uh... Moving on. Man, we are blowing through these topics today. Matter of fact, we're going to stop with topics real quick. And we're going to go into fucking, uh, well, news. Okay, here's what I got so far. As far as news goes, what I'm thinking is literally... There's a chance Sega might be returning to the council gaming landscape. And I don't mean by way of teaming up with someone. Now, I don't know the name of this council. I know that there's a nickname for it called the Spartan. No, it's not a Microsoft Halo reference. Everyone knows how terrible Microsoft does in Japan. Everyone uses the computers, but no one plays the games on the consoles. So... Literally, I'm not sure there's enough space for them. How, what you think, Hill? If Sega comes back, you think there's space for them? It really depends on how the people buying the game will take it. Will people have flashbacks of the Sega Saturn and Dreamcast? And it's like, they can have a chance to try to rise up or... Will people still be invested in their first-person shooters in 1080p and say, like, nah, that's a whack. Why do they even do this now? Just go back to working with Nintendo. My idea on it. Hmm. Also, uh, second piece of news. Let me make sure I get it right. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Uh, Street Fighter V, feel how you may about it, has introduced a new character that may or may not be the precursor of the Strider universe or rather the Strider style of gameplay and uh, fighting style. Strider, for those of you who don't remember, is a unusual, unusually but dearly loved video game franchise back in the beat em up platformer days which featured a high-tech sci-fi ninja taking basically being a one-man army. Street Fighter V has introduced a character who isn't Strider, mind you, but who introduced a character 
by the name of Zeku, who was only seen originally in the ending of Street Fighter Alpha 3 or 2. And was competing against, quote unquote, guy, even though you didn't actually fight, which I thought was weird. In a cutscene where they determine who is the current master or grandmaster of their martial arts style. Apparently, this guy went into hiding slash training for close to 10 years to come up with his own style. However, for some reason, when you do some of his super moves, he transforms into a young man with a red scarf around his neck. And he has the same logo on his chest that Strider does. Well, uh, the non-Canada Leaf logo. But here's the thing. When he attacks, his uh, long kicks and his long uh, chops make the same noise as Strider's weapon, the uh, specifically the Graham special attack, but it's on a lower decibel level. That being said, though, this character uh, is not out or either just came out in Street Fighter V, and we don't truly know his background and story just yet. However, it's nice to see them mixing in their own universe. Outside of a crossover, of course. There's no reason that they can't have layover. Think about it. Guy is from Final Fight. Who else they got? They got Final Fight characters. And they got some other they got another franchise I can't remember incorporated into them. But bottom line is, it's entirely possible. But I'm not going to say for sure that's exactly what it is because, excuse me, remember Strider's universe or rather Strider's timeline is equivalent of about 3,000 or so years after the current events of or really any Street Fighter game. 3,000 years fucking later. So, yeah. All right, Hill, what you got for news? Two thousand four. Yeah. And we've been waiting for three for how long? Six and a half years. Fucking shit. And it's still rolling down the weight train. Okay. Oh. Well, other than that, uh, Capcom in their infinite ignorant wisdom has decided to release Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity DLC costumes. However, it's not for all the fucking characters. It's for some of the characters. And I'm going to go down the list and A, describe or B, tell you exactly what the characters are from. Hill, feel free to make a joke or commentary whilst I do this. Number one, Superior Iron Man. Iron Man utilizing a symbiote base and uh, high levels of techno technology made a suit when he was being a douche in the Marvel canon universe. And I mean that in a literal sense. Their mental states and psychological profiles got warped slash altered to where they were their worst version of themselves without being an evil alternate version temporary bullshit. And then when he did that, he made a suit called Superior Iron Man. It basically makes him look like a Mac product with Tron lines. What are your feelings? I'd say he looks more like his uh, S5 when it came out, when they gave you the options of black, gray, and like the pink or whatever the fuck it was. He just basically looks like his standard phone covers. Damn. All right. The second one is Captain America looking like, well, uh, an ancient Spartan 
No military guys. He looks like some type of Roman soldier, whatnot. The shield somehow has a messed up paint job. Still not even sure how that shit had paint on it this whole time and was never scratched or anything. But I digress. And he kind of looks like he's heading to the movie 300. Not gonna lie. I'm surprised there isn't a Captain America 300 meme already. Take your favorite Roman movie, dip it in America, and that's Captain America's outfit. Miss Marvel, being one of the only Caucasian women that I acknowledge as sexy and or extremely attractive. Side note, uh, I don't hate Caucasian women or think that they're ugly or some shit. It's just she's one of the only ones that ever made me feel some kind of thing, quote unquote. They put her in her classic outfit, which I like to call the Black Lightning. Where it's pretty much an all black leather one piece with a lightning logo going across the front. And of course, her traditional side sash that she's always had. Person excuse me personally my only true problem with this outfit is that i think they forget that when characters wear their superhero mask you don't see their eyeballs or i you see a white dot or a white outline of where their eyes should go like spider-man so everything on this thing is fucking beautiful and i could watch it all day until you get to the face and i'm not saying she look uglier that they poorly designed her i'm just saying this is not what I was expecting to see. I was kind of looking for a Spider-Man type mask. What the fuck is going on right now? I got nothing to say about it. It looks decent. Less smutty of the other costumes that are coming out. <laughs> Next up is what I like to call the Wild Wild West Rider. We have Ghost Rider themed after... A cowboy or a spaghetti western outfit, because as we all know, you know, the, the cowboy era wasn't really the cowboy era like it's portrayed in the fucking movies. But you know how Hollywood is. Sometimes they accidentally make something popular. Ghost Rider looks really fucking good. Unfortunately, he looks like he died or something first and all of his outfit is tattered and torn up. But that aside, he looks like he came out of the good, the bad and the ugly and the spirit demon. I honestly don't have anything bad to say about it. If there was an outfit you guys should go for, it's this one. However, they missed a golden opportunity to turn his chain into a whip or a rope that he can fight with. What in tarnation, but in the dead voice. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're wrong for that one. Now, next up is Ultimate Version Thor. Well, first off, Ultimate Version Thor just looks like the Ultimate Universe that Capcom, not Capcom, Marvel made a few years back or decades back. Thor, the hammer looks the same except somehow smaller. And of course, they don't fix his fucked up frame much like Captain America. So Thor legitimately, it looks like his torso is too big for his own clothing. But other than that, he looks a damn sure a lot better than the current Thor that we got. But not by much. Too many glowing balls on them. That's not a joke. Look it up. Give me five minutes. I can make the same character in DC Universe. Damn. Damn. Doctor Strange, however, uh, even though it doesn't feel like it, is in his what I like to call classic modern outfit. Uh, he never really went through a lot of outfits or was known for doing a lot of changes. However, around the, I want to say, early, early 2000s or the Civil War era, Civil War 1 era of Marvel Comics, he changed into this outfit and everyone fucking loved it and it stuck. Now, the outfit is basically a trench coat with some red, a black trench coat with some reddish lines on it. And he ties it at the waist with a red sash and some type of magical item on it. And the rest is just black pants and black boots and some red gloves. Really, realistically speaking, he found that perfect balance of I would wear this outside. Of course, you know, lose the gloves mixed with. Yeah, this is a little bit comic booky. And of course, we have the character that nobody really ever woke up and said, I want in a Marvel versus Capcom game. And everyone thought and everyone thought was the fucking final boss of NBC three when they first talked about it. Dormammu. 
who looks like a walking volcano. And no, I'm not actually making a joke. His entire body is rock with what looks like lava rocks going through it. I feel like they didn't actually want to look up or try to talk to Marvel on this one. And they just said, fuck it. I don't even remember. And like, he had an alternate costume in MVC3. Why the fuck didn't they put that shit in? After that, we have Grey Hulk, a.k.a. Joe Fixit Hulk. A uh, bit of backstory. Grey Hulk is actually a form of the Hulk that is uh, self-aware and is able to properly communicate and think at a normal human being's level. But he's also a bit of an arrogant prick. Still a good guy, though. And he actually enjoys the finer things in life. And one of the first things he ever gets himself is a suit. Ergo, the name Joe Fixit. Yeah. <laughs> now, in the case of uh, Hawkeye, I know his outfit is from some particular part of the series in Marvel Comics where he either went undercover as a bad guy or he was temporarily being a bad guy. But that being said, I don't actually recognize where it's from, but it looked cool as fuck. Like, if you did some slight alteration to his boots, he could be some type of special operations person in anybody's military. You got to go in somewhere where you can't have loud noises. Okay, send the guy with the bow and arrow in. Everything is cool up to the Cyclops glasses, which slightly bugs me. <laughs> well, a lot of people are bugged dude, that Cyclops isn't even in the game. By which I mean this. The Japanese side, a.k.a. Capcom, fucking love Cyclops. But Marvel keeps telling him, telling them no. Mind you, keep in mind, you know, they have to go through Fox. But I was actually genuinely shocked about how much fucking... Like, how, how, how much they loved him, because, I don't know if you knew this now, but it was never really popular to translate American comics, or at least the X-Men, over in Japan, until around, like, the 90s. Originally, it was just people who could read English doing it pro bono. They actually couldn't even get published. So, yeah. That blew my mind when I found that out. But yeah, those glasses do look like they could be used for a Cyclops model or they could have come off of a Cyclops model that they couldn't use. Next up is Sir Arthur from Ghouls and Goblins or Ghosts and Goblins. Now, Arthur's a pretty straightforward character. I never really had a problem with anything except his jump animations look stupid. I know they're being faithful to the original material, but it's just weird at this point. He literally just splits his ass open so it looks like he farted to jump or double jump. Seriously, go look up Arthur Double Jump in Marvel vs. Capcom or really any game he's in. Now, he basically is wearing a regular knight armor suit, but he puts the shield, the, the mask down all the way. And they gave him tiny little neon blue baby wings. And I think it looks adorable and, and instead of menacing. It's, it's just adorable to me. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Chibi Sephiroth. Beware. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Young people aren't going to get the reference, but I don't care. Also, on a side note, uh, they made a trailer for it, which was totally fucking stupid. But um, if in case you haven't noticed, a lot of this DLC stuff is coinciding with Marvel stuff, but they don't want to admit it. Like the day the Black Panther trailer came out, same day the Black Panther DLC came out. Spider-Man has an exclusive outfit that you can only get by purchasing Blu-rays and DVDs of the newly released Spider-Man Homecoming physical movie. Now, that means that to get that DLC, you have to spend a minimum, on a Blu-ray at least, of $25.99. And if you want a Blu-ray, $39.99. No, not $39. Uh, $29.99. So you can't even download it or buy it off of the PlayStation Store, which I feel is total bullshit. First and foremost, that movie was already going to fucking sell. You didn't need to tack on DLC. 
for a game that people might not even play. Secondly, as per usual, we have no confirmation on a release date for when this shit is going to be made available for people that didn't buy that fucking game. I mean, fucking movie. The cheapest you can get it is, to my knowledge, is about 15 bucks because you can buy the digital version of Spider-Man Homecoming and you will still get the Spider-Man uh, outfit DLC. So, yeah, what the fuck, bruh? Now, moving on, we have Chris Redfield, which I'm actually kind of happy about because a lot of people keep forgetting that one of the hallmarks of being Resident Evil games is that you had alternate costumes that were normal DLC clothes, normal people clothing until you got to like game six where they just said, hey, you know what, let's just bullshit and pander and be smutty. Of course, there were some other questionable shit back in the day, but you get my point. Chris Redfield basically had a leather jacket, a leather jersey type jacket and some regular brownish pants and some plain old Stacey Adams looking boot shoes. And I'm happy they put it in. Also, it makes his torso not look creepy. In fact, I'm not going to lie. I feel like they redesigned his torso just for this outfit. I fucking love it. It's normal, but I love it. He looked like he just walked outside and said, oh, fuck, there are zombies here. I'm sure that was funnier in your head. And the next one on the list is, I don't know what to say about this, but it's, it's, it's Spencer... But of course, it's the remake alternate version of Spencer from that failed robotic commando game. Or uh, was it Arm Commando or Robo Commando? I, f I forgot the name of the game he's from. But they really only had like three games in their entire franchise. And they took his bionic... Oh yeah, Bionic Commando, wasn't it? I think it was Bionic Commando. And they took his arm... And instead of modifying it or upgrading the robot part to look cool or making a human organic version they based it off of some character design who was a villain and it just looks ghetto fabulous like it looks like a long elongated version of the fingers from metal sonic from the sonic the hedgehog series and to top it off it's in like this peachish pink color with some dirty ass boots and basically it looks like this man just got out of bed and said you know what i'm not gonna dress myself and i don't know how to feel about this outfit but it's fucking terrible it's genuinely fucking terrible Damn, that was good. And of course, we're not saving the worst for last. We're going to just dig into this right now. Dante, a.k.a. DMC Zero Dante, alternate costume skin. Yet somehow he still has the original version of fucking Rebellion. So at least they did 90% of the fucking job, but they didn't finish. They put this motherfucker in the game. But here's the really fucked up part. Why the fuck does he look better here than he does in his own fucking game that sold poorly but they tried to brag about making a million selling a million copies yeah well what do you do that doesn't mean that the game did as good now i'm pretty sure it's a debatable topic of the quality of the game but the point is is that a lot of people didn't like it as much and they don't want to see the character again and capcom is aware of this not to mention they had their own staff insult the original character designs and they even insult the original dante inside of the game so why the fuck do you want me to give you through what two ninety nine form? It's blunt. You don't be a cool character skin. Don't it? Don't people hate him? Nah, man, it's, got, it's gonna work out, man. You got it. Logic is flawed for even thinking he'd be a good skin. It's Capcom logic. We've all made that joke, but it's always been accurate. Capcom logic just means they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're making shit up as they go, and they don't really care if they fuck up until after everyone tells them they fucked up. Okay, well, this one, I don't know how to, I don't know how to handle or I don't know how to describe it correctly, really. So I'm gonna let you describe it. Um, 
Go ahead, Hill. Tell him about Chun Li. What we have here is your standard Californian from going bottom up. She has the cowboy boots, but not just like regular black or brown cowboy boots. They're like frilled and has like shit on them. Going up there, she's got like a mini skirt with more pattern designs. The weird ribbon wristband shits that all the fucking girls make in your classic high schools. You got the vest, and then you got the like half stomach cut shirt, crew cut, whatever the fuck that type of shirt is called. I think uh, they call it a blouse, or in this case, it's a tie up blouse. Uh, the Chinese nickname, I think, is called an oxtail. Don't forget the arms and the hands. One hand looks like she just tied a rope to it. Just like, she just found some rope and it's like, this will look good on me. And tied it on her left arm. On her right arm, has like, random wristbands and shit. And then she's got like three rings. Fighting with jewelry on is going to hurt both people in the outcome. <sighs> it's like Texas and a hipster had a baby that they adopted from China. I don't, I don't. I don't know what else to call it. It's got Johnny Depp hands. Oh, let's wear like three or four rings that don't have any significance and don't act, probably cost one or five bucks. And let's put on like 10 armbands. Yeah. Yeah. Like 10 armbands. Just make it look like a stylist dressed us this morning. Like we had no ability to dress our fucking selves. All right. Go ahead and do Nemesis. All right. What we have here. Is the man who walks up is actually the meme where people say this guy walks up and slaps your girls on your ass on your ass. What do you do? Your response is attend her funeral. Man's got a fucking giant ass bazooka right on. Just I wanna say they're loafers, black pants, and a giant green trench coat. And his ugly ass face. But that's it. Very menacing. You see him walking down the street, you just gotta clear the whole entire neighborhood. Or he will. Alright. This outfit just looks fucking stupid to me. Like, I didn't even recognize that as a DLC outfit. The shit to me looks like just a fucking recolor of his basic outfit. And I'm honestly offended that they got the balls to charge three bucks for it. That was not enough work done, in my opinion. I don't even have a joke or an insult. I'm, I'm insulted as a fucking consumer. Next. Dude, you do the rest. I did half. You do half. Now we have everybody's favorite annoying ass succubus with the bullshit ass clone combo. Morgan. I take it you hate Astrovision. <laughs> it's worse when you got the time stone. Mm-hmm. Always, inter- always cast priority when I'm trying to use Ragnarok bullshit. But I digress. Here we have your classic poker look. It's just all red. Actually, I don't know if you've ever played uh, Streets of Rage, but every time I see this outfit, I'm just like, did they just go and look up Blaze from Streets of Rage 2 and 3 and just say, Hey, Morgan, go put this on. But they don't give me... Whoa, what the fuck did you say? But then I was using push to talk and then like about to elaborate on that. But it's just... You were talking and the push to talk came on at the same time. Okay. Go ahead and elaborate. For this, we've got the blue hair, red wings. Red jacket, which I'm pretty sure there's Hello? nothing under it. 
Okay, hold on. Hey, Hill. Yes? You keep going through the outfits. I have to go let our late RSVP, I'm going to be there ahead of time, guest in. Because, you know, punctuality. No problem. But let's continue with this roasting, though. You go into the club, you see her. You have to charge $500 to even look at her. Because this is what she's doing. Going down from the stomach. She's got her short-ass shorts. Fat leggings, which I think are corny as hell. And red heels. All in all, we're just going to be like, yeah, let's flip the slut in the other angle where there's not much revealing, but you already know what she's working. That point. Ryu's pretty trash. It's just like, he's got, he pretty much looks like if he just got hit with a hot again. And like his bows were shredded, and it's been continuing. If any of you played like any Dragon Ball Z game or any fighting game ever where they have like the parts where your clothes get ripped off if you take a certain amount of damage, that's what he's looking like right now. Capcom's like, all right, let's take his outfit, but like erase everything from the neck down to the waist. Keep the gloves on, but also fuck up like his knee though. Now we have this purple Grimman looking motherfucker. I personally have no idea what game he's from. Maybe from Ghouls and Goblins whenever Homeboy gets back he can elaborate on this. He just looks stupid as fuck to me. It's like let's take his green and dip it in purple and charge you three dollars to get Alright, I'm back. I just went, went and said Ryu just looks like he just got hit with a hot oak and tore off his clothes and then the green gremlin dipped in purple. Now we're gonna get onto Voltron Sigma. Hold on, let me get in on this real quick. First and foremost, Capcom, how the fuck you gonna charge somebody goddamn $3 for Ryu after he got his ass whooped? How is that a costume? The motherfucker got bruises on his body. He's missing a pants leg. This is some damaged Goku shit. It's one thing if it was a toy. Somebody put detail into it. Somebody had to put it in the machine, model it, ship it, all that other shit. But this motherfucker right here, it's just Ryu with less of his own default outfit. Fuck you, Capcom. Fuck you. It, it would have been better off for him to uh, have that Street Fighter 3 look. I'm not talking about the one with the direct. I'm just talking about him just having clean... Clean pants with no top. You know you're going to say all of that again, right? Yeah, I know. It's cool. 